I know it sounds kind of crazy to meal prep right now when you're stuck at home, but what we're making today is gonna be easy. It'll take about two hours and you'll have breakfast, lunch, and dinner for five days, a little snack thrown in there as well. So if you're an essential worker and you're super busy or you're working from home and homeschooling at the same time, these meals are gonna help power you through your hectic weeks. And regardless of what you do, they're gonna bring some structure into your meals. So you're gonna be able to make healthy choices without relying on willpower, which can be really difficult when you're stuck at home with cookies all day long. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start by chopping some onions and garlic. We're gonna be using those in both the lunch and dinner. And one tip for meal prep is using some of the same ingredients across different meals if you're making multiple meals because that will cut down on prep time a little bit. I've mentioned this before in other videos, but I love starting my meals with onions and garlic. They're pantry friendly ingredients. They add so much flavor into your food. When you saute them, it infuses the whole dish. So I've got two yellow onions here. A little more than half will go towards lunch and the rest will go towards dinner. And for the garlic, I'm gonna finally chop about seven cloves. We'll use four for lunch and three for dinner. Now that we've got the onions and garlic prepped, we're gonna chop up two jalapeno peppers for lunch. We're gonna be making a chili. And if you like things spicy like I do, keep the seeds and membranes, which is where most of the heat lives. But if you're sensitive to spicy food, de-seed the peppers and then chop them up finely. After you chop up these peppers, make sure you wash your hands really thoroughly. If you don't and you touch your eyes or something else, it's gonna suck. What is something else? Your butt? What? This would be a good time to start soaking the red lentils, which we'll be using in an easy Indian inspired dinner. You need to soak them for about 30 minutes. The final veggies that I'm gonna prep before we start actually cooking, we've got some regular golden potatoes. This will go in dinner. And then we've got sweet potatoes, which will go in the chili for lunch. The recipe calls for three medium sweet potatoes, but all I have is this a normal one, so that's what we're gonna use. He a big boy. For the sweet potatoes, you wanna dice them up pretty finely so that they soften down into the chili, otherwise they won't cook all the way through. And for the golden potatoes, which will be used in dinner, you can cut them into one half inch cubes. And if you wanna leave the peel on, you can, but be sure to scrub and clean the potatoes really well. Now that we've got everything prepped for lunch and dinner, I'm gonna start by making the chili. It's a sweet potato pinto bean chili that's really hearty. Once the chili is simmering on the stove, I'll turn my attention to dinner, which will be curry red lentils and quinoa with roasted potatoes and chickpeas. It's kind of a mishmash meal that's very pantry and budget friendly and I think you guys will love it. Before you start the chili, go ahead and preheat the oven to 425 degrees and then heat some olive oil in a large saucepan over medium high heat. Add the diced onion with a pinch of salt and cook for about five minutes until a brown fond appears on the bottom of the surface and then start deglazing the pan with a spoon or two of water every few minutes. This helps soften and brown the onion without burning it and also infuses a lot of flavor into the chili. And once the onions are really well browned, you'll add the jalapenos, garlic, and tomato paste and stir constantly for a few minutes until the tomato paste is a few shades darker. If it starts to dry out, add a spoon or two of water. Then add in the spices. We've got chili powder, cumin, oregano, and paprika and stir vigorously for 30 seconds until it's very aromatic. I just finished deglazing the pan with some broth and then I added my secret ingredient, which is cocoa powder. I'm adding three cans of drained and rinsed pinto beans, but this chili is very easy to customize. So you can use black beans, kidney beans, or a mix of any of those. We'll also add the diced sweet potatoes along with a large can of diced tomatoes salt and pepper to season, and finally two chipotle peppers and adoba sauce, which is gonna bring the smoky, spicy flavor. So the chili is gonna be on the stove for about 30 minutes at a rapid simmer, and in the meantime, I'm gonna start on dinner. The first part is we're gonna roast some potatoes and chickpeas. So I've got my peeled, diced potatoes, and then I've got one can of drained and rinsed chickpeas. Roast them in the oven until they get crispy, and to season, I'm adding some whole cumin seeds, and of course, some salt and pip. Spread the chickpeas and potatoes out on a baking sheet and roast for 20 to 25 minutes or until the potatoes are golden brown and tender and the chickpeas are a bit crunchy. While the chickpeas and potatoes are roasting in the oven, we'll make the curried red lentils and quinoa. So we'll have this curried dish and then we'll serve roasted chickpeas and potatoes on top. To start, we'll saute one diced yellow onion for about five minutes until it starts to get soft. And in the meantime, we'll check on the chili. See how it's doing, give it a stir, make sure it's simmering, not boiling. And once the onion has softened, add a few cloves of minced garlic and a mixture of Indian spices, curry powder, cumin, turmeric, and a bit of cayenne. Stir to coat the onions and cook for a minute or until it's very fragrant. And then we'll add in about 3 fourths cup of uncooked quinoa, 
along with the red lentils that we soaked earlier. Stir to coat all the spices and then add some water along with a large can of crushed tomatoes. This is gonna be the liquid that brings this dish together. Season with some salt and pepper and bring to a gentle simmer. Then cover the pan and simmer for 15 minutes. Lunch and dinner are cooking on the stove and you don't really need to pay that much attention to them, just give them an occasional stir. And in the meantime, I'll go ahead and prepare breakfast. We're gonna be making chia pudding and I'll give you two different options for toppings. To make chia pudding, you need some chia seeds, obviously, and some plant-based milk, any kind you like. And usually my formula is for every 1 4th cup of chia seeds, I use one cup of milk. And I'm just making a big batch today so you can have it throughout the week. Chia pudding can be a little plain on its own, so I have a few different flavoring options. I've got some vanilla extract, and then you can use any kind of warming spices. Today I've got cinnamon, ginger, and cardamom. And a key for chia pudding is you wanna whisk everything together. Let it sit for five minutes, whisk it again, and then put it in the fridge for about an hour or more to thicken. And the reason I whisk it two times is that chia pudding tends to clump up in the first few minutes. So if you whisk it again before you refrigerate it, you're less likely to have clumps. I'm working on one of the topping options for the chia pudding. It's totally optional, but if you have frozen berries, this is a great way to use them. I'm just cooking them down until they get mashed with a little bit of sweetener and a little bit of orange or lemon juice. And then we'll serve that with the chia pudding or I'll show you a different alternative as well. For the snack idea, I'm gonna make one of my favorite things. It's really simple, three ingredients, any nut butter or seed butter you like. This is peanut butter, almond butter, cashew butter, tahini, they all work. I mix in some raw cacao powder and maple syrup. It's kind of like Nutella, but it's way better for you. I'll pair that with apples or bananas throughout the week for a snack, but it's also gonna be the second topping option for our chia pudding. Dinner should be done by now. The lentils and quinoa should be soft and the liquid should have evaporated. And this is a great time to use up some frozen spinach or greens in your freezer. Just cook them down until they're wilted and finish with a squeeze of lemon juice. This is meant to be a lighter curry, but if you're looking for something more indulgent, add in a half cup or so of coconut milk or serve with some vegan yogurt, which is a really nice contrast to the warming spices and tomatoes. The roasted chickpeas and potatoes are also done and they're nice and browned and crispy. I like to add a final squeeze of lemon juice and toss to combine. For dinner, I've got the curried red lentils and quinoa. And to serve, I would serve this with some crispy roasted potatoes and chickpeas on top. But if you're storing them in the fridge for leftovers or for meal prep, store these components separately so they stay best. The nice thing about this meal prep is that the chili should be done around the same time as the curry and the texture should be really thick and velvety and the sweet potatoes should be fully tender. It's smoky, a little spicy from the chipotle peppers and spices and the sweet potatoes really nicely balance out the heat. You can stretch this meal out even further by serving it over rice, quinoa or my favorite pasta. And as with any chili, it tastes better the next day and it's freezer friendly. The chia pudding is done setting in the fridge, so I'm transferring it into these individual jars, and then you can add whichever toppings you like. The reason I chose chia pudding for breakfast is because it takes five minutes to meal prep, and because it's packed with heart-healthy omega-3 fatty acids. You're gonna get even more of those healthy fats from the chocolate spread, so you'll definitely avoid those mid-morning munchies. Or you can serve the chia pudding with the berry sauce and add a spoon of nut butter or toasted nuts or coconut on top. There you have it, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the week. Super delicious and satisfying. And if you're looking for more vegan meal prep tips, I've put together a short playlist for you to watch with some vegan meal prep basics.